So I had a chat with my friend, he's a fund manager and he's investing in public companies only. So he's what we call a hedge fund manager. He's investing in companies that perhaps maybe just did an acquisition or about to do an acquisition. And you know, they, they kind of like try to guess how the market will react after the acquisition, right? So think about it. Most, most people, they buy a business, they know the history, they know the numbers, they know what happened. But with him, he don't really care about the financials. Like for him, it's, it's not even necessarily to make like a long-term decision on his end. It's more of a short-term decision to see if the stock will jump up or not based on basically FOMO, right? Based on fear of missing out, based on whatever random news in the market. And then uh, other investors see this as an opportunity. So they jump on it and the stock can go up one, three, 10% a day. And on, lar and on large numbers, I mean, that's massive for him and the fund, right? Obviously, there obviously days that it goes down, but days that it goes up, it can be like basically on one day, you can make like the most people yearly income, right? So anyway, me and him, we discussed the rumors about Google potentially buying HubSpot. And if you don't know, obviously, Google, you probably know about Google and HubSpot is a CRM. It's basically a software that helps people with marketing and sales. Anyway, we talked about how this might impact and affect Google's uh, stock price, first of all, and advertising client, because most of their revenue is coming from advertising, right? So we're thinking about the idea of what would happen if they were to integrate with HubSpot CRM, basically to allow everyone to advertise on Google, better tracking, better CRM, better opportunities and whatnot. And just overall, the short term effect on Google stock and HubSpot stock, like right after the rumor, right? And it's pretty interesting to see that as soon as you saw like um, a news out there, like stock, HubSpot stock went crazy, right? And it's interesting because you can literally see companies value going up or down by billions of dollars just because some journalist with an audience wrote something about it. So, I mean, obviously you see it also in other markets like crypto, think about Elon's, Elon Musk and Dogecoin and whatnot, but yeah, that's that's for a different video. Anyway, so we discussed in details the idea of acquisitions in public companies and how sometimes acquisitions look stupid in the beginning, but after five or ten years they look genius, right? So we discussed the the the, the fact that one of the biggest acquisitions move in tech of all time uh, is probably the acquisition, the Facebook purchase of Instagram. Like, just imagine this, right? Imagine if you're the Facebook founder and you see this rising star business that might become your competition at one point called Instagram. So what do you do, right? And if you're Facebook back then, you do a billion dollar acquisition, right? So let's dive into this a bit on what it looked like from the inside out and what it means for you as someone who wanna be involved in rollups or acquisitions as an advisor or as an entrepreneur. Now, if you, you're new here, I'm the founder of rollups.com and acquisitions.com. By the way, we worked on, at this point, more than $500 million of acquisitions. So back to Facebook and Instagram, just picture, picture this. It was 2012. Uh, Facebook back then is already the king of social media. Uh, but there's this newcomer, Instagram. Instagram is great, gaining traction fast, especially it's gaining traction with the younger audience, right? So Facebook back then, I mean, it was Facebook before, now it's Meta, obviously. So they made a move, they bought Instagram for $1 billion, but it was crazy. It was back when billion dollars was like, whoa. And the market didn't like it at first. Like the stock went down after the acquisition. So it means that the confidence of the investors got shaken. And like, think about it. When Facebook first went public, their stock was at $38. Then comes the Instagram deal. And suddenly those numbers are diving in like, freaking skydiver without a parachute, right? So it went down to $18 per share, pretty dramatic. But first forward to today, and Facebook or Meta is at around $500 a share, depends on where you check in, with a $1.3 trillion market cap. So what changed? I wanna show you, Colin, just so you see the view of an entrepreneur, of an investor, and how it can apply to you, right? So this is where it gets interesting, because after the buyout, Within just one year, Facebook revenue went up by 60% and their operating income, it went through the roof as well. And the crazy part is that their operating expenses barely changed after the acquisitions. So there's nothing more beautiful to see on a company's financial 
uh, more than like something like this. Like think about it. if you're a company and you're buying another company and your operating expenses are not really changing, but your revenue is going up 60%, it means you're doing something right. But the, the real question back then was like, what's the real value that, or even right now, what's the real value that you, they dug up in Instagram, right? Was, was it just another cool app to add to their portfolio or was it something else? And I'll, I'll tell you this, like it's, it was about, first of all, keeping you glued to your screen and never leave their platforms. And Instagram was bringing cash, sure, but it's also made Facebook this one-stop show for everything social networking. And all the time there was probably, oh, I mean, think about it, just think about the advisor that worked on that deal, right? Some acquisition advisor that walked away with a pretty nice commission check, facilitating a deal like that, easy high seven figure payday for supporting the transaction. So that's first of all, is to think for yourself, can you find an upcoming company that maybe is not, not a lot of people are familiar with, maybe is not even bringing a lot of revenues, so no one's really competing on buying it, but you find about it and you connect it to a buyer and you sell it for higher multiple. I mean, that could be interesting, right? So that's on the advisor side. But let's break it down further. How do you know if an acquisition like this was bad or good? Right? So with an acquisition like Instagram, you got to look behind the price they paid. It's more than that, right? Back then with them, Facebook saw the potential. They saw Instagram not just for what it was, but for what it could be within their business. And that brings us to here and now, like what should we be looking at in those acquisitions, especially with those big tech companies? It's not just about the revenue on day one, I think is the biggest lesson here. It's about the growth potential and the synergy, right? So think about it. If some company buy another company and suddenly their revenue is climbing up, while their costs stay the same and stay flat, it's not just growth, it's super transport, transformative for a business, right? So that's the kind of move that doesn't just add value, it, it multiplies the value for a company. And in Facebook case, they were able to integrate their ad platform with Instagram. And by making that integration, basically using their existing asset and technology, into a business that got access to distribution but did ha didn't have the experience of becoming an advertising platform, they created billions of dollars worth of value without creating a new product. So they basically used the existing asset and integrated it into a new business. Instagram generated an estimated $60 billion revenue in 2023, which is almost 44% of Facebook's total revenue. Just think about it, $60 billion in revenues. They bought it for a billion dollar. It Like back in 2012, they didn't do a dollar of revenues when Facebook bought them. Like think about the guts and, and just the scrutiny and, and the, the hate that Zuckerberg got back then. People are like telling me stupid, what a mistake. His stock went down like 50% almost after their IPO. They thought they're screwed. Like they're making stupid decisions, but looking backwards, I mean, just think about it. Over 2 billion people use Instagram once a month now. It's the fourth most popular social app worldwide. I don't think it would be possible without integrating Facebook team processes and understanding of the ad business. So with your business, what are the lessons you can take? What assets do you have? What businesses can you find that have access to distribution, to technology, to good team members, right? That you can integrate with yours. Or like I said, if you're an advisor, how can you find those deals so you can make one to 10% of connecting them with each other, right? And remember, while on most acquisitions, I suggest, especially if you're buying the old school boring businesses, I suggest to look for cash flow and history and whatnot. On some acquisitions, it's not about the, you know, the, the money you spend on a deal either. It's about the value you create after you close the transaction. The problem is that if you don't have like insider information or an existing business with assets, it's very difficult to predict what those synergies might look like. Because in the end, I mean, that's what really kind of create the best deals out there. Um, and that's why I'm saying if you have any business, think what you can do with your existing assets and what businesses you can find to integrate with your assets so you can have an amazing upside after the acquisition. If you 
can't buy a business that is cash flowing or can't buy a business that is not cash flowing just for the promise and you can't finance the deal, then can you introduce a deal like that to a buyer and get one to 10% of the deal, right? Or if you want to buy it yourself, you just got to find equity investors to support you in the process because it's going to be difficult to get debt financing on those deals. So, but that's, yeah, you got to really believe in the uh, uh, potential. So just to share with you some thoughts around kind of like some of those public companies deals, let me know in the comments below if you're still watching, if you like that, if you want me to talk about public acquisitions and whatnot, and if so, what questions do you have about them? And I'll be happy to share because I'm, I'm talking to a lot of people who are mostly dealing with public companies lately. And I could probably share a lot of information about acquisitions and whatnot from those deals and lessons that we can apply to small business. So yeah, go out there, do some deals. I love you. Bye-bye.